the basement of the firehouse. Here's how Kevin Shea, Pat O'Keefe, and Warren Forsythe spend their downtime. This job, you running in and out of buildings, wearing an extra 100 pounds of gear. You're going through some heavy-duty smoke conditions. Everything in this city is always on a top floor. So you could be going 30, 40, 50 stories. It's hard enough just getting there, carrying all the stuff we carry. Once you get there, you haven't even begun to work. The first thing that hits you is, um, you know, some of the excitement and uh, the thoughts you're going through your head about the job and all. And all that is erased immediately when you're on the stairs because then the next thing you think about is your legs and everything else is gone, you know? I don't train with heavy weights like the animals. I lightweights. So I'm a runner. I like to run in the gazelle. You know, gazelle like. We're a good team. You know, he breaks down the doors and I run through them. You're sitting down, have a cup of coffee, boom. The next thing you know, you're running through a six-story tenement, fully involved in fire. People jumping, people trapped, people on a fire escape. You got to go from zero to 100 miles an hour in a snap. A nice slice and a cigarette. The men respond to a fire in Upper Manhattan. For Warren Forsythe, firefighting is really a family affair. His dad rode with Rescue One, and he has three brothers serving on the New York City Fire Department. The top floor of an occupied building is ablaze. Rescue goes in. After searching for victims, Rescue One stands by as other units fight to bring the fire under control. I'm on the road again. I'm out on the meal. Rescue One is ready to go but not before Warren runs into his older brother. This is Greg, this is the other guy. I'm Warren's older brother, I told him everything he knows. Later that night, another fire, another brother. This is Brian Forsythe, my younger brother that just got on a job recently, about a year ago. And I have a father, a grandfather, a couple of uncles that are firefighters. Family tradition. Family tradition, you know? You had it. Brian, I'll talk to you, we gotta go, we gotta go to our, All right, probably the next fire is coming in. In 1985, the men of Rescue One went out to fight a fire. When they got back, they didn't realize that there'd been a fire right next door to here. The burning building collapsed and completely destroyed the firehouse. All that was left was this wall. It was the front of the house then, and now it's the back of the house. That's what these guys are all about, tradition. The wall is covered with plaques that pay tribute to firefighters that were killed in the line of duty. And part of that tradition is remembering remembering that some of these men left families behind. That's a pretty sobering thought, especially if you got kids of your own. Like the firehouse? Yeah, you like the firehouse? When you get off at 9 o'clock in the morning from this job, you want to be able to go home and play with your children, be with your wife, be with your loved ones. A lot of firemen find themselves in situations here in the city uh, where they put themselves in trouble, you know? to help other people. Warren knows what that's all about. A good friend of his recently died in the line of duty. His name was Al Ronaldson. The man went in there to make a search for people living on the top of the second floor of the building, and uh, an accident happened, and he was crushed. And uh, his family's paying for it now. They have five children. And uh, they're all young and they're not, they're not gonna have their father anymore. But we're gonna try to help out as much as we can, but you just can't take your place as somebody's father. I'm a father, a family man, and that's sometimes hard. You know, if you're risking your life, you think of your family, but what brings you through it is that the guy you're going for has got a family too. Kevin Shea also worries about the danger when he thinks of his children. Kevin's dad was a firefighter, too. 
There was a time when Kevin didn't want to be a fireman. Didn't want any part of it. <laughs> he just decided uh, on his own, uh, several months after he was in the volunteer fire department, that uh, he decided he wanted to be a fireman. And what about the youngest Kevin Shea? You're looking at the end of the line with me. No more fireman. He's going to be a dentist. <laughs> no, I'm being a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be a fireman. It must be scary to hear your son say that, especially on a morning like this. Kevin and his teammates are headed down into the basement of a burning peep show place in New York's seedy Times Square. Thankfully, a search of the basement reveals no victims, and no firefighters are seriously injured. It's one of those dirty magazine girl places. They cut the place into cubicles so that customers can go in there. And it's like a maze. It's hard to get through. We go all the way back to a small door which led down to the basement. We got back to the door. We got down to the basement. There was, there was partitions, and the fire was behind a bunch of partitions. We got some of it to knock down the fire, but the fire was coming over our heads, coming up the stairs, virtually trapping everybody. Pretty much what happened here happened at a fire on 23rd Street where 12 guys, 12 firemen were killed. They were down in the cellar and they couldn't feel the heat, but the fire was, was around them and above them. So we got out, we got out of time, you know, in time. But the fire spreads quickly. More alarms are sounded. More units are brought to the scene. It is hours before the fire is brought under control. Hours of smoke and noise and fear. And somewhere a little boy is saying, I want to be a fireman. And his father has to wonder. 